this is where the excitement happens. What I've got here are a couple of starters made with whole grain flours. So this is to show you the different textures, um, the, the different sounds and feels. So this starter has been made with wholemeal flour. In the UK we would call it wholemeal, you may call it whole wheat, you may call it whole grain. So this is a wholemeal starter and what you'll see is they become quite textured. These can smell really strong, really, really strong. And they can be quite chatty. Let's see if this one is. I hope you can hear that. So that's, as I'm stirring, that is the bubbles. Look at that. That is the bubbles all the way through this beauty. Look at that. See, for all the years I've been doing this, I still love it. So that is our whole meal, whole wheat starter. Make it in exactly the same way as the white one, use it in exactly the same way. What you might find is it imparts a stronger flavor. If you want sourdough with more flavor, often using a whole grain starter is the answer. This one, again, slightly different. This little beauty is a wholemeal or whole wheat spelt starter. So you can see it's just a bit more pink. There's a lot of texture. And this would look quite similar if you were using a rye flour. This little beauty, this one should be quite chatty. Let's see. Oh, I hope you can hear that. So this is quite a different texture. Look at that. Oh, and the smell. You almost get like the grassiness come through with some of these whole grain starters. Oh, gorgeous. So that's just to show you the different textures that different starters might have. And again, this comes down to the type of flour you use. And I, I can't say this enough, in that all starters are going to look different, smell different, behave differently. You could take a starter from my kitchen that smells and looks a certain way, start using it in your kitchen with your flour and water, and it will start to take on the characteristics and idiosyncrasies of where you are and your flower. So it makes a difference wherever you have them, whatever you're using in them. And all that matters is that they work. That's the key thing that we want them to do is to work. So don't focus too much on, but mine doesn't look like yours because that will drive you crazy. Just look for the growth. That's the key thing. And if you find that difficult to judge, when you fed your starter, take a photo. Take a photo of what it looks like when you fed it, and then take a photo of it later on to see how it looks by the time you've finished. So I'm gonna feed my star now so you can see how much I keep and where my starting point is for all of my recipes. We're back now with my starter. So, this is my little star from the fridge. When your starter is ready to go, when it's ready to use, you can see that it's responding well, you deem it's ready to go. Either start using it immediately, or all you need to do is put its clips on and put it in the fridge. That's all that needs to happen to it. The fridge, the cold of the fridge, basically puts it to sleep. It will stop it from fermenting, it will stop it from overworking, it will stop it from trying to explode out of the jar. So that's all you need to do to store it. And that would be exactly the same whether you are going to use it once a week, twice a week, or you're going on holiday. 
don't need to worry about your starter. So I use my starter once a week. It doesn't need feeding in between times, it doesn't need anything doing with it at all except being asleep in the fridge. So when your starter is ready to go, put your clips on, put the lid on depending what jar you've used, put it in your fridge and that is it. That's all you need to do until you are ready to use it or till you want to use it. So after this point no more discarding is needed. You don't need to go through that process anymore. If you read a recipe that's called a discard recipe or a recipe that's using unfed or discarded starter, just feed your starter for the purpose. It's all just starter in a different name. So if you, if you have a recipe you want to make that's called a discard recipe, see how much starter you need and feed your starter to do that job. That's all you need to do. So your starter's ready to go, and stick it in the fridge until you're ready to use it. When you're ready to use it, get it out the fridge and feed it for the purpose. So when I'm going to make my bread, I get my, bro my starter out the fridge in the morning, I feed it, I let it respond, I use it later in the day. There's different ways you can do that, there's different time scales. Uh, I've got various ones of those in my book, there's various ways I do things, but that will be in another video. Uh, that comes along with making the dough and how you're going to time that. So for me, I will take it out in the morning, I will feed it ready to use later in the day. You can feed it direct from the fridge, you can sit it out on the side, let it warm up a bit. The main difference will be if you feed it direct from the fridge, it's going to be quite stiff to stir, if you leave it to come to room temperature, it's going to be a bit easier to stir, it's going to be a bit looser. What you'll notice, even coming from the fridge, and as we were making the starters, is you'll often have condensation, water on the inside of the lid of your starter. And that's normal, it's the fermentation process creating gases, sometimes creating heat, and that's all that it is. So again, it's nothing to worry about. So this is my starter. I took her out the fridge earlier and because she's been sitting on the side, she's already starting to grow a bit because she's a very strong, happy girl. Even without feeding, she's starting to grow. So in my jar, all I've got is 80 grams of starter. That's all you ever need to keep. Anything between 50 and 100 grams of starter is your perfect base amount. When I want to use her, all I do is then feed her for the purpose. So I'm going to feed her ready for making my dough. And because I feed my starter based on what I will want in the dough, then I don't get any spare. I don't have any discard. I don't build up any huge amount of starter. So I've got my starter on my scales, down to zero, and because I want to make one dough, this will make a lot more sense when it comes on to making your actual loaf and your actual bread. But just to show you the process of feeding her. So for making one dough, I just feed her my usual 30 plus 30. Or like I said, if it goes a bit over or a bit under, just match it with your water. There we go flour and water and stir. Doesn't need to be particularly smooth. No special magic to it. Yes, I scrape things down all the time because that makes me very happy. Nicely lumpy, here we go, nice thickness, doesn't need to be any more than that. And then the lid will go on, I'll leave her lid on just loosely on the side until I'm ready to use it. And what I'm looking is for that to grow up to that. Once I know that she's grown, she's active, She's responded. This has only got my clips on because I'd had it sitting on the side earlier. 
Once it's active and responded, then I know that she's ready to go. And we should be able to get some sound, should. Let's try. And we've got all of that, look at that, texture and resistance. And again, don't worry that I've stirred it. It's fine. I can still spoon that out into a bowl ready to make some dough. And I will clarify again. I only have a couple of jars or all these jars to show you the process. All you need is this one. Just this one little baby is everything you need to make all of your sourdough. Unless you particularly want to have starters made with some other flours, you will only ever need the one. And you know, I, I do recommend trying to make starters with other flours. Just, just to see the process, see how they behave, um, you know, see how they smell, see the different flavours that they impart on your bread. It's really worth doing it and it helps you to have a, a broader understanding of how the process works. It, um, you know, it just, it, it teaches you more and you might like the flavour more so I think it's worth doing, and I think it's fun. It's something that I did right from the beginning when I started to make starters, was get lots of different flowers and see what they would do, um, just for the pure fun of it. Uh, sometimes you can make them as well by putting different liquids in. You could put milk in, you could put beer in. You can see what you can do. But from the beginning, just follow the steps with your strong white bread flour and your water. Follow the steps and just keep going through the process and don't worry about what it's doing along the way. All we need it to do is get to a point where it's going to respond, it's going to rise with its feed. Then we know if it can lift itself, it can lift a dough. So I'm going to put my lid on my baby and I'm going to leave it to do its very lovely thing. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope that you have found it everything that you needed to know how to make a sourdough starter. Um, this is just such a wonderful thing. I love making sourdough. I love being able to share it with people. And if you have any questions along the way, anything you need to know, anything you're worried about with making your starter, please, please get in touch. That is what I'm here for. So with your starter, once it's ready to go, you are well on your way for making some beautiful loaves of bread. And again, I will say again and again, I promise it's so much easier than you might be thinking, or you might have been told, or you might have read. Everything I do where sourdough is concerned is share the pure joy and simplicity of making it, because it truly does not need to be complicated. It can fit in with your life, Whatever your lifestyle is like, whether there's family, work life, whatever there is, making sourdough can fit in with that. And it's such a fulfilling thing to do, quite apart from the fact of making your own fabulous, healthy, tasty bread. It's pure satisfaction and joy of it is, for me, that's the biggest part. I enjoy the making it probably more than anything. And of course, there's the eating it too that we get to do. So... Thank you very much for choosing to watch this video um, and for using my steps to make a starter. I would like to say a huge, huge thank you to the wonderful James who's behind the camera making this happen. A big thank you to my dog for managing to stay pretty much quiet through the whole thing. You might have heard the odd tip tap in the background. Um, but really, thank you very much for choosing to watch my process for making starters and just have a go, really have a go, and just, just follow the steps. It's just flour and water, and uh, I promise, I promise it will work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.